All right, what's up? I'm Adam from Wall of Sound. I'm here with Keaton and Brody from Invent Anime. How you doing, fellas? What's up? Good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, we're doing all right. We're um, pretty deep into tour, but out here in Australia, going to play a pretty big show at the Forum, so I'm pretty excited. Yeah, amazing. Well, you guys have been touring flat out. I mean, ever since Heaven came out, what, like 18 months, two years ago now? Yeah. Um, you guys have been on the road constantly. How are you like navigating the demands of like touring nonstop as you find yourself in Australia? Um, <clears throat> I think right now we're really in the thick of it. I would say like I'm probably at somewhat of my lowest, which isn't too bad, you know? <laughs> so like all things considered, like if this is my lowest, you know, we're pretty blessed or whatever to be out here. But mm. I was just telling him we're on our seventh week in this current run. We did a U.S. tour with North Lane and then flew straight out of here from L.A. Didn't have any time to go home. Um, so yeah, man, I mean, it's, it's pretty, been pretty heavy. We've done some of the longest tours we've done ever this year alone. So, um, and I think he has a little factoid that we've played a show or been on tour or something every month this year. So we haven't Mm -hmm. had a single full month off of the road, but, um, I would say, man, I just think it's like as much as like, I would love to complain about it. It's like clearly a blessing that people Mm. want us to be out and totally you know want us to tour with them and do all that so um all things considered not too bad yeah know. amazing well yeah a lot of that time you spent on the road you spent with a lot of australian bands um in the past few years alone like you've toured like heaps with polaris alpha a bunch of times and now they've brought you to, to their home country um i saw you guys on your north american run la- last year with void of vision mm-hmm. you just wrapped up a tour with north lane thornhill and wind waker what is this kind of ongoing affliction with uh, Australian bands? Like, what, what draws you to the Australian music? I mean, you're doing all this while on uh, being signed to UNFD, which is an Australian label. You're in Australia for the second time in two years. Um, is there a reason why you keep being drawn to Australian music? Uh, I don't think there's any specific reason, or I don't think it's anything to do with the bands being Australian. It's just, uh, at least for us, that is. I mean, maybe that's the reason why so many bands are so good that come from here. Maybe (laughs) it's something to do with being Australian. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I realized it long before even joining Invent. Just bands like Parkway Drive, North Lane, Thy Art is Murder. I saw all those bands kind of blowing up, and Mm -hmm. then more and more and more kept coming. Like, my first tour with Invent was with Alpha Wolf and Thornhill. And then, like you said, the tour we just did was we were the only band that wasn't Australian, and that was in the U.S., you know. So, Mm. um, yeah, it's a weird thing. There's something in the water over here, I think. Just so many good bands coming out and so much good music. But Are there any any Australian bands you might have your eye on that you think maybe one day I'd love to tour with that band? For me, we have toured with Polaris, but like a modern-day Polaris tour is a much different thing than Mm. it was before. You know, they have like... They've gone through a transformation. They're just like a monster of a <laughs> band now. Um, but honestly, I feel like we've <clears throat> we've hit a lot of the bases. Like, you know, North Lane would have been my pick, which, like, we toured with them, like, way, way in the past. With but Ocean Grove as well, right? Uh, yes, yeah. we did do that. Yeah, another shiny band. With Ocean Grove, that's true. Mm. Yeah, we. I don't know what it is. I think rather than it being we are attracted to Australian bands. I think Australian <laughs> bands are just doing so well. Well, mate, we'd love to see more of you down here. I mean, at what point do you think we can claim Invent Animate as our own? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I think we fit into that mold uh, for sure. I think two of our top five Spotify cities are Australian. Really? So, yeah, yeah, as far as streaming goes, they kind of they kind of take us for their own, too. So. Unreal. Well, you know, I um, on this tour that we're with the Alpha Wolf, you know, you guys... D- have been playing six song sets um i saw you guys in new york with beartooth and again that was six songs uh, you know previously to that i saw you guys in north american headliner um and you played you know a, an unbelievable set and i thought you know can you really fit the true essence of an event animate set into just six songs um i do think you can yeah or, or like a more kind of condensed modernized version i think you could go back into the past and say like the essence of an invent like includes that mm. um, but I think what everyone knows and loves is like the new record and um, some of the deluxe songs as well and I think you can really like package that in and, and kind of capture it but if we had it our way we would definitely like dig pretty deep 
you know, and do mm. like a nice like 12 song set or something. But we also have plans to do cool stuff maybe in the future for something like that as well. Yeah, amazing. Metalcore is going through a change, I feel anyway. You know, like bands like yourselves, Silent Planet, Currents, North Lane are kind of at the forefront where the, the, the sound of what metalcore can be and should be is being challenged and the dynamics of it all is, is going in all sorts of different directions. Does that have an effect on how you approach recording album number five as, as you kind of transition out of the heaven stage? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely something we think about. You know, it's really easy to compare yourself to other bands, especially bands as similar as, you know, Silent Planet or North Lane or Currents um, that all kind of like toe the line of more progressive stuff, but still metalcore and modern metalcore that is, you know. Mm. Um, so it's a hard thing. Like you want to, you know, stick to what you're used to and what you love and like also what people expect from you. You know, you don't want to just like suddenly 180 and do something different. But at the same time, you're like, okay, how do we stand out? How do we do something different and not repeat ourselves? Um, which is something you guys do so perfectly. I mean, you know, your, your last few singles alone, I mean, you released Heaven Are, which was kind of soft and everyone was kind of like, oh, this band's going soft now. What's going on? And, you know, then Sleepless Deathbed comes out and everyone's like, oh, this is heavy and then it back all of a sudden like they never went anywhere but <laughs> yeah. um you know is is doing that kind of intentional to keep people on their toes or are you just kind of n naturally creative sure i mean it was definitely like when we decided to put heaven or out as the first single of the uh the definitive songs um it was definitely a conversation and not everybody instantly agreed on it mm -hmm. you know because it was such a different song but in my opinion that's also such like a progressive and like uh I don't know. It, it that song to me feels like a big statement, and it doesn't feel like a huge departure as far as like going soft because it's still so like I don't know. It's still very technical. I feel like it's still mm. uh, satisfying and exciting for musicians out there. But yeah, then doing Sleepless Deathbed as the next single was definitely like okay. If anyone didn't like that, hopefully they'll like this one, you know. And uh, that's definitely a much more straight ahead heavy song. So yeah, it's it's something we're definitely aware of. But at the end of the day, I think like whatever our favorite and whatever song that has us the most excited is probably going to be the one that we you know choose to put out have you guys kind of already started planning out what lp5 is going to look like in terms of um what direction you're going to go down in that regards um kind of you know we'll like we've taken time and sit sat down and wrote um and there's a couple of ideas that have popped out and it's been like that's pretty cool but um i think as a whole it's just like we're just straight up at this point i feel like writing songs that we like and however that turns out it will turn out but i think there will probably be more extreme soft and more extreme heavy you know mm. there will be uh more extremes of both and probably what you're used to hearing as well you know so um, totally i think we've just got so many influences and when it comes to writing for me it's like almost directly related to what i'm listening to at the time you know so like if that happens to be like something very, very soft or chill or ambient or whatever, um, it'll definitely come out that way and mm. the record will reflect. Totally. Are you guys planning on sticking to like three to four year album cycle or is it just kind of seeing where the road leads? Uh, yeah, I don't I don't like to like too worry too much about timeline just because like uh, you start putting something together and if it's like I don't like this that much mm. you know you don't want to try to force it out or whatever but um i would like to move faster you know i don't mm. i don't you've got bands that like i'm like begging for a new loathe record you know <laughs> yeah, so, yeah like um nobody wants to like be waiting that long but um yeah there's there's definitely like a goal to have it out at a certain time but at the end of, at the, end of the day it's just about whenever it's you know as good as we want it to be and mm. ready to come out and who knows how long that'll take, you know? Yeah. Has the conversation around whether Land and Tours will be involved in that creation process occurred? Yeah, yeah. I think Marcus just loves, at the very least, like being at a computer and a mic with Landon. Yeah. Um, he loves to track and record with Landon. Mm. And um, with that comes a lot of very, very good ideas. So I think naturally we will be reaching back out to Landon. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, you know, Keaton, uh, from what I'm aware, you're a bit of a, you're a, bit of a coffee snob. Uh, yeah, I yeah. Mean, uh, he's kind of, it's kind of bled over into him yeah. as well. So. Yeah, as well, I like um, just, um, want to know, is there any kind of spots on tour that you, that really stood out for you that you just like, if anyone goes to this part of the world, you have to get a coffee from here? Yeah, yeah, um, well here in particular, we went to Path, 
and Path is just like very, very incredible. Top five for sure. Wow. Um, in Houston, we've got Simply Coffee and Blend In. Philadelphia, some standouts, or Thank You Twice, or Thank You, Thank You. You might, you might have a couple more. Um, yeah, we. It's funny because we were talking about it today, just because <laughs> being at Path was such a good experience. It was literally some of the best coffee I've had, and it's really funny because. We might get some heat for this, but a year ago when we came here, uh, we had really high expectations for coffee, and I, I don't think we lucked out that time, but I also think that our, our kind of coffee palettes were a little bit too snobbish, maybe. Like, we were, <laughs> we were specifically into, like, this certain type of iced coffee, and I won't go too deep into it, but mm. uh, any place that didn't do that, we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, I, I mean, it's been a year, and, like, we're both a bit newer to coffee, um, but... He especially has gotten very deep into it, and uh, so yeah, I don't know. Today we got some extremely good coffee, but um, yeah, I'm rambling. But yeah, New York, there's a place called Suited that's great. La Cabra is great, um, and yeah, he said Stereoscope, which is in L.A. Day Glow, which is there's I think three locations across the states, but yeah, like, lots of good. Coffee. Yeah, well, well, with the coffee being so good here, I mean, there's obviously a good excuse to come back. Is there the possibility of having a hat trick in Van Animate three tours in three years in Australia? Yeah, I mean, we've talked a lot about um, plans for the next thing, whether that's, you know, supporting someone or doing something else, but uh, time will tell. But so far, it's going great. The last time we were here was perfect, and so far, this one's great. It's a sold-out tour, so couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah, sweet. Well, to end up our chat, I've put together a little bit of a little would-you-rather so, would you rather have invented breakdowns or have animated your favorite Disney character? I think, um, funny enough, we're both kind of like Disney kids, so that's a little bit harder than wow. it should be. But I think if we invented breakdowns, you're the we god would, of metal, right? Yeah, really? we <laughs> would just be like historic and like. Metalcore would belong to us. Mm. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, so that's that's. I think I would rather have invented the breakdown. Yeah. Okay. Sick. Yeah, I think considering our professions, it would be very lucrative to have done that. But uh, <laughs> but also in the grand scheme of things, you know, uh, having invent or uh, animated a Disney character that would also be very lucrative. And maybe who knows? I'd be in a completely different place in life because of that. I don't know. It's Hopefully. hard to say. Yeah, um, all right. Well, would you rather invent a new instrument that's revolutionary to the metalcore genre or have a crowd perform a wall of death, but it's in real time anime animation? <laughs> um, I, think, I think I would prefer to have the instrument. Uh, for me, like an integral new instrument. Because mm. in my head, it's like that's just like a new piece of. Um, gear i can just like default to or you know kind of mm. create a vibe for um i'm always looking through like synth libraries and stuff like that just like digging endlessly so yeah if there was this instrument, i'll tell you man like the, the keytar's making a big big name for itself in metalcore at the moment yeah, could, I mean, yeah you know you can make invent the new keytar yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> exactly would you rather invent a device that enhances the experiences for the concert goers watching you perform or animate a music video for your band that is such incredible quality that it rivals the quality of Pixar and DreamWorks. <laughs> <laughs> that one's funny for me because I actually, I'm picking the music video. Okay. Um, and the reason being is I feel like I am so, I'm kind of over music videos unless it's like so fucking sick. You know? <laughs> um, there's a lot of music videos out there and I'm to the point where I'm like, do people even watch them anymore? You know? Do you have a favorite but, music video of yours? Um, I do like the somebody that I used to know is like so cool and simple and mm. effective. Is, is That's another I, Australian artist. Yeah, is yeah, it, it know, is. Yeah. yeah, he kind of fell off. Oh uh, yeah, who knows what he's doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, there's a couple of other like ideas I take inspiration from, but um, mm. yeah, I, I'm I'm just a bit of a music video hater because of that because mm. I feel like there's so much more to offer. Um, it's just out of reach for bands like us, you know, like yeah, we don't have like million dollar Drake videos <laughs> on the option. So yeah, if we had the, like the most fucking sick animated video ever, I would be extremely pleased. Yeah. See. Yeah. Y you said invent a device that enhances the concert experience. Yeah, correct. That's a hard one because I feel like 
us two specifically are always like standing out front when our front of house guy Wickham is uh, kind of doing a virtual sound check and we're listening to how it sounds in the room. And we're always like, oh, what can we do to make this sound better? Like maybe my snare will be too loud in the room and it's so loud in the room that it's louder than, you know, the PA, the mm-hmm. snare mic'd up in the speakers. So uh, selfishly or just like more specific to like what I'm always thinking about, I almost feel like inventing something to make our live sound and the whole production on stage visually um, making that as good as it can possibly be. I feel like maybe I would choose that, but I also agree with what Keaton's saying about music videos. I almost feel like, you know, that's just a default thing. Like you have to do a music video if you do a single and as a result, so much of them are bland, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever we can do to make that better as well is worth it, I think. (laughs) But I think inventing a device to make the concert going experience as good as possible is probably what I would pick. Yeah, amazing. Well, I've got one more. Um, would you rather invent a career-defining riff that makes the entire band shit themselves when played or animate a short film based on your on your most colossal mistake while performing? Oh, um, <laughs> man, so we have to shit ourselves if we play it. Is, that, is it a Correct. figure of speech or literal? Literal, uh, okay. Yeah, I think I think the shitting yourself thing would just be so annoying because <laughs> like we would uh, clearly want to play and it's career defining and people are like, holy shit, I want to see that. <laughs> but we would have to be like, if we play this, we're all going to shit. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I think there would be too much risk involved and um, you play safe. Yeah, I would have to play it safe and pick the the animation. Of the biggest mistake we've ever made. But that, to be fair, I'm pretty sure that's on video on YouTube. I won't throw us under the bus. But <laughs> but people can, people can find, find it if they look for it? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. If you, if you hear it, you'll know <laughs> that something has really gone wrong. So <laughs> that's my answer for that one. Uh, yeah, I think, I think, Sam, I think we could animate a pretty funny video and it wouldn't wouldn't even be that big a deal and maybe maybe that could help us somehow but i don't know maybe we could uh find a way to get past the shitting yourself thing and like <laughs> all wear diapers on stage and you know we'd be so used to it that you know we'd be ready for it every time and maybe the riff would be so good that you know we'd be in such a good position financially and we'd, <laughs> we'd have such a big crew that like you know we'd all shit ourselves and then someone would come out and we'd change real or, quick and it'd be great or the device that you create somehow solves the shooting problem uh yeah yeah maybe this co- maybe this connects to the previous question and the device that makes the concert going experience better eliminates the shitting yourself two birds one stone yeah there you go <laughs> yeah done easy sweet well there you have it right well thanks a lot for joining me guys i'll uh y'all catch you next time yeah absolutely thank thanks so much for having us